let's start our slides more on quantization and quantization of weight training. Wonderful. So um, let me talk a little bit about what we have been discussing in the previous week. We have covered the quantization fundamentals. Well, um, what was quantization? Quantization uh, in our context, in embedded deep learning, refers to the process of reducing the number of bits that represents a number. So in the context of deep learning, the predominant numerical format used for research and deployment has so far been 32-bit floating points, or which is also called single precision or FB32. So we are trying to quantize FB32 from single to lower precision. So um, along with the five years of uh, this history of quantization on deep learning, uh, it has been extensively demonstrated that weights and activations can be represented using 8-bit integers, which is also called int8, without much um, lowering the accuracy, I mean, incurring significant loss in accuracy. Um, and we have uh, covered an example related to this. Actually, you remember we have the video, in the previous video, what we've done was we have, uh, we had a, um, uh, AlexNet down, uh, loaded from the um, uh, MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox and using the AlexNet's weights we have quantized them to some precision and we've seen the effect and with integer 8 we didn't get an error in an image but with lower precision at 6 or 4 bits we had problems. Uh, starting with this week we are going to explore more aggressive uh, quantizations like 4 bits and 6 bits um, to what extent we can do quantization and uh, lower precision. Okay, that's why the use of even lower bit widths, such as 4 to 1 bits, is an active field of research, guys. And this is uh, showing great progress, and these are nice um, academic uh, fields right now. And if you want to do a master's thesis on this or a PhD thesis on this, I strongly recommend you to do it, guys. Okay, so let's cover and There's a very nice website here. I'm going to just show you these websites and this guy has some very nice information about what is integer, what is floating point, avoiding overflows. We are going to cover these concepts. Just I've, I had so much, I've benefited from this website and I think you should as well. Okay, so let's continue. And another reminder, the important reminder is, in the previous uh, video lecture and the lecture in class, we have talked about the inference. Uh, we are trying to do efficient inference. Inference is the forward run. It is using the pre-trained weights to do uh, an intelligent decision. So all uh, neural networks have some weights, pre-trained weights. After a process called training, we have the weights. And uh, if we want to get the uh, result of the network for some input, we do inference. That's called inference. So. In the previous example, in the previous video example, we have covered uh, quantization in inference. That's why we call it inference quantization. But uh, we could discover quantization for more efficient training. It was out of the sp scope. We are going to uh, start to discuss it starting with this week. Guys. So inference is a conclusion reached on the basis of evidence. So the basis of evidence in our context is the pre-trained weights. So, uh, the obvious benefit of quantization was significantly reducing the bandwidth and storage. Good, good. That's nice. So, for instance, using 8-bit uh, integer values for weights and actuations basically consumes four times less overall bandwidth space compared to single, which is 32 bits. That's we know that. And it also makes it faster and energy efficient because of the architectural details of most processes. Most processes process 8-bit fixed-point integers with more efficiently with less energy compared to single precision. Okay, so uh, there's a nice example here. So uh, in this tutorial, uh, there is a nice tutorial in this um, um, conference. This uh, NIPS is a very famous conference, and in 2015 there was a very nice tutorial there. By William Daly. I strongly recommend you go there and just watch the tutorial. It's a, a slides from that tutorial. Uh, there are very nice um, 
uh, sources like this, I strongly recommend you uh, keep an eye on the um, these links I provide in my slides. They are really, really useful. And if you just uh, keep their, take a look on their slides and on their uh, papers, you are going to find out that there are many things. And one of their analysis is in addition and multiplication, which are the, basically the most important operations we do on convolutional neural networks, we get this much um, efficiency. So energy saving um, with respect to floating point 32 is 30 times better when you do it in integer 8. So they've got results like this. They've done tests like this in different hardware and they've just found out that it's incredibly more efficient to use int 8 compared to floating point 32. So it's uh, it's obvious that uh, quantization to 8-bit is significantly better. Okay, so more addi additional, additionally, integer compute is faster than floating point compute. compute. Uh, and if you use things like FPGAs, it is much, much, much faster. Okay, we are going to talk about this in time. So further quantization. Okay, 8-bit quantization is okay, but can I make further quantization? Yes, you can. And this is also a very nice field of research. You can do binary quantization in which you have only two types of weights or activations. Your weights or activations are either 0 or 1 or minus 1 or 1. One or one, so they are both binary because you can use only two values. Or there's another one called ternary, which is either minus one, zero, or one. You use three values to represent three values. You need two bits, so this is a two-bit quantization. This is a single-bit quantization, and these are very, very, very uh, uh, recent fields of research. And there's a very nice binary network example here, the XNOR net from ECCV 2016, just you go ahead and just find it, read the paper. I strongly recommend reading these kind of papers if you're interested in doing a master's or PhD in this subject, guys. Okay, I continue with my slides, so there's further quantization. We get back to dynamic range, and we've covered this. In the, um, in the example that we've covered in uh, MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox, what we've done was, for each layer separately, we have calculated the dynamic range, the maximum value for the weights and biases, and the minimum value. And uh, for that dynamic range, for that interval between the maximum and minimum values, we have mapped, we have linearly mapped, the num according to the uh, number of bits of precision, some values. If you use 8-bit precision, you use 256 different values and linearly map them for those values. And mapping those values, you had your precision. How many values you can represent depends on the number of bits you use. For 8 bits, I told you, 256. However, for single, you can represent these numbers. This, this is the range you can represent. So, finding your dynamic range, which is specific to, for, to a layer, is very important, guys. I mean, there is no way that you can represent this interval, because this interval is incredibly large. Because in this interval, you have billions of different values, which you cannot represent in 8 bits. So if you want to do a nice quantization, where the quantization intervals are not very big, which is the quantization error actually, you need to designate your dynamic range realistically. Okay, so when you designate your dynamic range realistically, you have something called a scale factor. In the example in the previous video, you'll remember that we've calculated the dynamic range for a, um, um, uh, for a layer. In that layer, we had the maximum and minimum values. And we have found the interval. We have uh, found the difference between the maximum and minimum range. We have um, uh, uh, divided that value with uh, 2 to the precision, which is 2 to the 8 and 256 in our case. And for the first layer, it was something like 0 0.005. So when you quantize a value like this, actually, this is what you get. So you're using 8-bit precision. So you can use shifts, actually. Uh, so you are going to do this. So what you're going to do is you are going to quantize your values. If you are going to quantize your values, you should designate how many bits you use for the exponent. 
For example, you are using 16-bit values for quantization. If the quantization value is this, you can use 10 bits for exponents. And when you quantize a value like this, this is what you actually get. Actually, this could be the dynamic, uh, this could be the quantization leap for the dynamic range, but it depends on the number of bits you use. So, number of bits will designate how close you get to that number. So, you can use shifts instead of dividing these numbers. And actually, for if you do a shift, um, there's a nice paper here covering that. Instead of training deep learning networks with low precision multiplications, they uh, study the uh, multiplication operation and dynamic range, and they propose methods to use shifting instead of dividing. Okay, so let's continue.